What's that, my physician boy? I was made looking cute, looking clean, looking sexy, and it's here for the first episode. Keep it 99 media where we critique the media. Yeah. I know y'all used to keep it 99, whatever, and then keep it 99, whatever. And of course, I'm joined here with the one, the only first person on the show. This is not on Spotify because this is a pilot episode. So we're gonna try probably do three pilots, and then we're gonna start shifting over to. We did like we did a hundred with casual conversation. Then we found Ebony, and then we're like, oh yeah, this it. We don't found we don't found the mix. <laughs> so, so we had to do it like that. We do it like that. But I'm joined by the one, the only Hollywood Sensei of the Blurred Cartel. How you doing, today? Mike? Yes, sir. You know, it's your boy Hollywood Sensei, Sensei of the Blurred Cartel. I mean, we in the building. You know, make sure y'all check out that What It Sound Like podcast episode. We had a lot to talk about last night. I mean, shout out to the episode. Big views, big views. I saw. I saw big. Yes, views. sir. Thanks to you. I appreciate. it. Shout out to my first stream back. By the way, if you want to see me stream, it'll be Zellmate99. Let's go Zellmate on Twitter. Zellmate on Twitch and Kick. And overall 99 Gaming on YouTube if you want, if you join in them. I am back in it, and my first stream was used. Shout out to Lala for being the person in me at the beginning. Because ain't nobody come in. And then a bunch of people. Shout out to my little sis Mina for giving me that big raid. And then people like, oh, he back streaming for the first time in this in eight months. <laughs> and the second time in two years. <laughs> 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 How did viewers? I'm like, oh, shit. hey, hey. <laughs> I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to get addicted to Gotcha. <laughs> That's it. I'm just trying to get back addicted to a Gotcha game. Shout out to Wu- Wuther and Waves. But y'all see the top. We got some. We got we got a couple topics we're gonna talk about. We critiquing the media, but I want to do this first because I didn't. We didn't. I, we didn't. We, when me and Hollywood, we did all the welcome to Hollywoods and um, what it sound like with the Drake and Kendrick beef. I mm-hmm. do want to give a man credit. Despite what happened in his life, we, we listen. That's that's a whole different story we got to get into. But DJ Academics did make this beef better in a lot of ways that we don't want to give credit for. I know a lot of people hate him, but I have to give a man credit because I don't watch the streams often. But every day when that beef was going on, I was clicking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. You know I mean, as much as I I hate to admit, but you're right. You know what I mean, he did make this beef a little bit more interesting. Like he was, in my opinion, how back in the day when everybody would go to Funk Flex to give him their records so he can drop the bombs on it. That's that's what academics is now for the for the new, you know what I mean, for the new generation. Like he's you want something to premiere, you you throw it to academics. You know what I mean? So and the way and Drake would call him and say, "Get on live." He was, I think he said he was, which he was, he was doing a podcast with Andrew Schultz. And Drake said, "Leave right now, I'm doing the song." And Act Left did the song, and then he got on the song, trying to talk, dissecting the song. And every time, I promise you, every time Act would get online, Kendrick would drop just so Act, I believe she's just so Act. Is in. <laughs> and then the Drake and the Hennis said, every time he said this. And then, and then the epic moment when Meet the Graham drop. No way. No way. <laughs> that's just gonna, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the defeat of Drake forever. That Definitely. line right there. He like, no more euphoria. No more six one six. We on the henny tonight. It's up. Family matters. Play it again. The Kendra drop. Kendra drop. No way. Y'all lying. Then he saw it. No way. No way. <laughs> this nigga Kendrick man. <laughs> There's no way gonna be iconic. No matter what happened, it's still gonna be iconic. That's the one thing I remember from the B forever because that felt like Drake lost right there. Yeah, <laughs> that no way felt like Drake lost. No way. Act was so he was too devastated. <laughs> I was supposed to drink the Henny, <laughs> so I do want to give him credit. I would give credit even despite how I feel about somebody. If something was big, I want to give him credit. And this what this show about giving credit, talking about something. And one of the first things I do want to talk about is. I want to get your thoughts on. Is mm-hmm. we got some clips from this. We got a big event happened in media, and I want to know. I want this is, and the reason I'm talking about this in terms of media is how, how will we handle this because I think one of the greatest moments in streaming history happened last night. Kevin Hart with Castanet. Let's watch a few two clips that I think was really funny, and it was a lot more. But I don't want to just get into it. But yes, yes, you got it, you got it. Oh, 
And then another clip we got from it. Featuring T-Pain in this clip. Let's take it back. T-Pain! Oh, that's actually T-Pain. T-Pain. With, with the 50 gifted. Well, how can Rainbow come in and gift 100 and T-Pain cheap ass only <laughs> T-Pain, what the fuck was that? I just saw... I just saw it said Rainbow somebody did something 100, and then you came in and did 50, you cheap piece of shit, T-Pain. Do another 50, man. I can see it in real time. Hey, you get me. But yeah, that was a funny moment, I thought, in yesterday. And my discussion is, I don't know if you watched the holiday, but they ain't really discussion, because I think, by the way, it broke streaming records. It's the most streamed live ever. I think he hit like 365,000. Hmm. Beating Kaz only with Nicki Minaj at 318 and then beating Drake's 310 with Ninja back in the day. So it's the most live stream ever. But it was like, by the way, I that was one of the funniest streams I've ever seen in my life. That was an amazing shot. The energy of them two. It's like it's it was like looking at an uncle with his nephew. Yeah. He didn't he didn't know what streaming was, but he was just following his nephew, which I think most celebrities don't do. Most celebrities like, I gotta look at my image, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Even in the end of the stream, I think I saw, he said, listen, I don't know nothing about this world. I said, you leave, I'm just matching your energy. And I, I felt like that made one of the greatest streams I've ever seen in my life right there. Yeah. And Kevin already funny, so he just like, and you could tell at first Kyle was doing what he used to do with celebrities, like, hey, what you want to do? You want to do, you comfortable doing it? And then after a while, he's like, let's do this, Kevin. Kevin like, I'm down. <laughs> I'm just going for the ride, because he gave him a bunch of deep, dope advice, too. So it was like a, it was a really dope stream for a young. And then he, he even told him how to because like I said, I don't know if you saw, I don't know if y'all saw it either. So I'm gonna tell y'all too. He like I'm passing the torch to you. I feel like you the future. So I'm forty. He said I'm forty five. I'm passing the torch to you, young man. And I feel like you the one that can take it. And I'm like that's a dope moment for Kat. Mm, <laughs> so how you feel about Kevin Hart? He is one of the biggest industry leaders in the world. Mm, Kevin Hart. Of course, I fucks with Kevin Hart. You know, I'm a Philly nigga. Kevin's, you know, Philly support Philly. You know what I mean? I didn't see the stream, but I know for a fact that, you know, the traction the stream is going to get. It's Kai that, you know, biggest streamer on earth right now. You know what I mean? Then you put him on stream with Kevin Hart. You know what I mean? People still love Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's still that dude. You know what I mean? And it's just, you know, it it, it, it is dope to see that. You know what I mean? You know. I fucks with it. You know what I mean? Hopefully that shit like that open the door for, for a lot of other streamers. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was dope to see. It. I fucks with it. And the opening city was to the energy, man. That's why one thing I did want to just keep reiterating. The energy, he just let Kyle like, yo, you run this. I'm just here as support. And right. I'm going to try to make this the greatest streamer ever. And I was like, I appreciate that. And this is the part I want to talk about, how the media need to re relate to this. Listen, if y'all can't find a way, I'll write it for you. I, I done wrote, I done wrote, help write a books and movies. Listen, I'll help write. Get, you got to get them in a movie. An uncle, nephew movie. Yeah, definitely. Top, top definitely. You got to capitalize on them two together. You got to do something. It broke streaming records. You don't think it'll break movie records? Because all the little kids going to want to see Kyle. The other people going to see Kevin, I think. And, I, and they energy match. That's the one thing you got to always have. A lot of times, sometimes the energy don't match. But they energy match. You can't, but you can't force it though. You gotta, you gotta, like I said, if I was writing for them, I was thinking today, if I was writing for them, it'll be a lot of spots that I'm leaving to them. Definitely. But oh, I, I, I do think you on to something though. I can see in the future a Kai Sinet, Kevin Hart movie coming. You know what I mean? I can see it. Like, you know what I mean? I can so, see uh, it. Yeah, and basically like him teaching them something. Like, if you, I know you knew on the force or some buddy cop movie. I don't know what it'd be, but I think that would be an amazing stream. I think that would be. I mean, a movie. I think it could be amazing. Um, like I said, but as long as you don't try to force it, I think yeah. you could do. I think you could do amazing things with that. 
Um, my my thing is to the media. Listen, y'all gotta start embracing. The, the, it's the new age. The internet is the new age, and I think um, I think people need to. I think I think the older legacy media gotta start embracing. And I and I see they are. They are. Um, you have a you have a um from the first point, Pat McAfee. Mm-hmm. Internet show like he he gets to cuss on ESPN, and they just they just overlook it because Pat is Pat. Yes. Pat already was successful. Now you see it with Shannon Sharp. Got fired from Skip. Started focusing more on nightcap and club Shay Shay. You see the pop-off mm-hmm. with the Cat Williams interview. Now yep. you popping off on ESPN while, unfortunately, Skip, his numbers is way down. His numbers is falling. <laughs> you know his mean? numbers way down. They ain't, I think they try to put Paul Pierce on them, but he might be too real of one. <laughs> he might be too. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, listen, Fox, now if you commit and t- tell Keisha and they that loose, we like we fell in love with Shay when he stopped drinking, when he started getting that yak mm-hmm. bring it on. So they that Paul just be balling. Maybe I guess you just running with bang strippers on it like Cameron did. <laughs> I'm gonna go smash Yo, if, if Paul Pierce brings some strippers on undisputed, yeah, you know what I mean they back, they back up. <laughs> Yo, they back I'm up. Skip, they'll skip face watching the strippers. <laughs> Viral. I will watch the episode. I will watch. I will stop that watching this wild. Yeah. Yo, that would be crazy. I you know mean, they they gotta have Michael Irvin on for that episode. If he gonna bring the strippers, <laughs> you gotta have Michael Irvin in the building. We losing mean? recipes. <laughs> we're losing recipes, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. We're losing why they, recipes. Why they stripping? We losing recipes. You know I mean? That's why we losing recipes. There's too many strippers out there. Not enough. Throwing money the whole time. <laughs> we lose the rest of me. <laughs> Greatest moment in DB history, I'm telling you. Oh, uh, shit. I like, listen, I feel like that's the thing, though. I feel like you got to either go all in or stay or stay neutral. Uh, like I can yeah. see, we're seeing it. Uh, I'm hoping, and this is also why I want to get into that, too, about embracing it. Inside the NBA. Make that an internet show. I will watch. That would be the most watched internet show. I'm telling you. Ernie ain't got to break his contract with TNT. Nope. It could just be an internet show. Put it on um, one of y'all YouTube. Shaq got a podcast now too that we're gonna talk about later because he has some other. But put it on the put it on one of their channels. Watch how it grow because everybody loves inside the NBA. Even if people that don't watch basketball, I know white people that don't watch basketball will watch right. inside the NBA. That's what I'm saying. The NBA. I don't know. I think this would be a bad move for them to lose inside the NBA. Like it, too. It like it's it's too entrenched in the culture. You know what I mean? Like the NBA culture and just the media culture in general. Like I mean, it's just I don't know. I think that would be a huge hit. Like if they moves the NBC, who who's the new team now? Like I mean, because we know Ernie's loyal to TNT. He not leaving. And he got other I mean, jobs at TNT besides. That so he's not he on the contract for that, but the other three would be basically free because they only do NBA stuff, right? So that would be a big hit. Um, for people that don't know what's going on, NBC got the rights to the NBA from Turner, so now the inside NBA will, they, but it don't start to the so you got one more year of it, so it don't start. So they got time to figure out if they're gonna join Chuck's production team or Shaq's or whoever, they got time to decide on it. So I'm hoping we get a good – we have a decision soon, Um, sometime next year on it. And, like, Draymond got his own, too. A lot of people got their own thing that they can do. So Shaq got his own podcast. He growing himself. Maybe that's the plan. Like, let Shaq grow. Use mm-hmm. Chuck's production team or whatever. We, they, I think they can figure it out. And, like I said, if it's an internet show, it doesn't bre- breach Ernie's contract. I don't believe – No, it wouldn't. I don't, no, that's a TV deal. They, they, I don't even think – when Ernie's contract was made, I don't even think they thought of the internet. Well, not the new version of this. <laughs> that made me sign for a long time. So I don't think I don't think they would put that clause in there. Yeah, you can't go on no other internet show either. So, but I think that and I probably even if they did, I think they would. But I do think Ernie and I think they could do something special with that because the Pat McAfee show. I know that I know some people brag about the numbers. They don't get the same numbers. So and so do overall, they get more numbers than all the shows. Right? Because y'all people forget it's live on ESPN Plus. And it's live on his on his YouTube, which is seventy thousand. So I think I think um Stephen A get what two fifty. I think Pat gets like one ninety. But if you mm-hmm. add the twenty thousand from ESPN Plus and then the seventy thousand that watch live, he gets more overall because they run it at the same time. <laughs> so 
So he overall, he's winning overall if you do everything. But Stephen A. Smith even got into this now. Right. Well, he talked about View 2 versus LeBron all of a sudden. Which also, I saw a woman complain about the topic of Stephen A. playing LeBron. They got some producer that's 20 years old. And he saw that clip of going viral because Mewtwo versus LeBron, who will win, and they did it for Stephen A. Except for they can't quite do Mewtwo on ESPN because it's supposed to be more serious. But right, it is what it is. But I think I think the internet's a new way because Hollywood. I think the legacy media is running out. Oh yeah, definitely. The internet been the new wave. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's you know. That's not about to end no time soon. You know what I mean? You've seen what digital media has become. You know what I mean? Because print media is, it still exists, but it's not, you know, as lucrative as it once was. You know what I mean? And now that all the new generation is, you know, they all hopping on their own podcast. You got players, active players, active artists, whoever, they got their own podcast. So, like, I mean, the new digital age is just, you know what I mean? It's the way you either you got to get with it or you're going to get lost in it. That's it. Like, I mean, you got to, you know, you got to hop on. Like, you can't <laughs> you can't stick with that old ways because the old ways ain't working no more. Like, the old ways is out. Like, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. Like, <laughs> get on this new wave. Hop with that digital. Hop that digital wave. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, you got the Pat McAfee show them proved it can work. Club Shay Shay proving it can work. Nightcap is probably one of the most watched shows. So you got all those shows, and it leads to another problem with legacy media is somehow Caitlin Clark has become a f- version of a force of hate from the WNBA player. Which, by the way, there is no evidence of this, but right. There is no. By the way, I'm gonna show you. I got. We gonna. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna break it down more. But there's literal evidence that these people are taking tweets and relaying it from the WNBA player talking to one of the ESPN people, NBC, NBC, A people, and saying they said they directing that towards Kayla Club. So we gonna do. We gonna show some stuff and we gonna show how they feel. Let's see how the WNBA actually feels about Kayla Club. This is the star of the WNBA, by the way, Angel Wilson. And, and, of course, y'all know the coach, Becky Ham. We love Caitlin Clark. Yes. There is no... <laughs> I think she's amazing. I watched every time I possibly could. God, and God. our league loves her. This is nothing to do. We're just doing our job. We're going to show up. <laughs> Who is effort on the other team is on the other team. We don't really care. We're going to show up and do us. And so I think this narrative of, like... Exhausted, everybody everybody yeah. hating on Caitlin Clark. And even the black and white thing. Yeah. Knock it off. It's not there. It's not there. So shut down the noise. And by the way, what is she, 22? She's a 22-year-old woman with a lot of pressure. She's not perfect. <laughs> She's not perfect. She's a rookie in this league. Like, back off. Yeah. She's Back learning off. and growing just like everyone else. I feel like that's what people don't give her a chance. This is growth. We tell our rookies every single day, this is new. You're coming into a whole nother new world and starting over. So it, it's the questions are only annoying because it's like, she's young. She's a rookie. Y'all keep asking us these questions as if she's a grown ass woman that's been in this league for years. Like, no, she's doing her job. We're doing ours. And at the end of the day, that's how we grow is when we get better and we do things like that. So. Yeah, I'm just exhausted over the conversation because I know she's exhausted. I can only imagine. So. And yeah. so far as the charters and this and that, I don't care if Kermit the Frog made the change. We've been fighting for this. Becky over here. We've been pushing. I mean, I've played in this league at 99, and we were traveling the same way. And I'm, like I said, I don't really care who's bringing this or who's bringing the crowds what i care is that they're there and they're on the eyes and they see how great women's basketball is that's what i care about and that's a mic drop Bye. <laughs> um we also got comments like this that believe the media by the way they actually believe the media caitlin clark should quit them and go to the big three and laugh at all the jealous races Fade back in the broke obscurity. The WBA des- doesn't deserve her. Make them go back to fly spirit. It was trash product and always will be. Listen. By the way, he he has no post. Just like nobody has of anybody hating on Caitlin Clark. 
There's that one Demi. Okay, I, I, I will retract it. I will retract it. Old girl from Gills Arena might have hated him a little bit. So Lexi Brown? <laughs> yeah, Lexi Brown might hate. Other than Lexi Brown, I have no evidence of anybody. And one of the main culprits they say hate is this. Angel Reese takes shot at Kaylin Club and now deleted tweet. Let's see what Angel Reese actually said. And that's getting a win in a packed arena, not just because of one player on our charter flight. Scott Dan. Oh, she's taking a shot. At Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark no. has never mentioned a charter flight in her life. This is a right. shot at Charles Barkley. Yes. <laughs> this is not a shot at Caitlin. By the way, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are rivals and been rivals forever. They, I'm pretty sure she's not just going to take a random. And by the way, she's one of the rookies who's also bringing in the trend because y'all love to hate her. Y'all watch her too. Chicago right. Sky did not play. <laughs> she is one of the rookies that's getting attention to. Right. So she, so she, I'm pretty sure she's like, yo, listen, I'm selling out Chicago Sky Arena that didn't sell out last year, and Caitlin Clark is not playing. So, so you know what I mean, I'm, I'm Angel Reese actually winning. You know what I mean? She putting up wins. That what I'm you saying. Mean? It got a game winner and one as I looked at the camera. So, so you know what I'm saying. So I, she has no reason to, and she is clearly speaking to. But headlines like this will lead people like LeBron and Charles Barkley to say what they say, even though I think LeBron mostly wanted to get his. Feel on Brandon more so than Caitlin Clark. I think that was just a way to ease it, ease it in, though. But Brandon, I, yeah. I, I, I see the game. He threw Caitlin Clark in there just to, you know, because <laughs> they on Brandon ass like, right now. Bro. Yeah. He like, oh, you. He threw Clark in there so they wouldn't be like, oh, you just trying to defend your son. But it's his son, though. Like, what fuck do you expect him to do? Not yeah. defend his son? You know what I mean? But we, but we just seen the face of the WNBA say, listen, I I love what she doing for Ali. Right. <laughs> Listen, I have no hate for she's a rookie. She gonna get it. She might have a hard time. She gonna be amazing. That's the face of the WNBA saying it. And her coach, the coach of the winning a team that's probably gonna be undefeated again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that, that's what they thought. Them the only, by the way, that's all I see. I saw people try to make Diana Taurasi hate, but they took half of what she said and split it up. It wasn't <laughs> with, hate. She was just speaking the truth. Like, yo, she's gonna struggle early on because it's a grown woman league. She's gonna struggle. That's what this is. Most rookies struggle. If you're not mind more and Candace Parker, you're gonna struggle. <laughs> and I'm I'm sorry to y'all who don't watch the NBA and ain't watching a long time. Kayla Clark might be gonna be the most explosive NBA player. I mean WNBA player ever. I will give her that. But she won't be the best. Yeah. <laughs> she won't she be wasn't the best. even listen, bro. She was like. I love Caitlin Clark. Her game is amazing. She's gonna transform. She's gonna transform the WNBA though. She's a baller. She's definitely gonna transform the league. She's a win. I mean, she balled in college. She's gonna ball in the league. But we got people gotta stop acting like, yeah. You know I mean, we didn't just see her losing the national championship game to South Carolina. Then the year before, she lost to Angel Reese. And then the year before that, what was they doing? Like, I mean, the points is cool. She brought attention to the game because she can score. But are everybody acting like she's this this decorated winner that's coming into the league, you know what I mean? And people just got to bow down to it. Like, I, I, I don't see it. It's it's not there. The evidence is there. Angel Reese not here. Angel Reese literally three and one against Caitlin Clark in her career in college. So, you know what I mean? Y'all can cut that out with the Angel Reese is hating comments. And, and with everything else, the stuff with LeBron, Charles Barkley, I seen Colin Cowherd say it. I seen there's Jeff nobody. Teague. They have no video of it though. I seen <laughs> Jeff Teague saying it on his podcast. How these women being petty, they should basically Jeff Teague and him and Colin Cowherd basically Teague. said Teague. that the league should take it easy on Caitlin Clark and let her ball out. Like I just feel like it's so disrespectful to players like Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson. You know what I mean Jewel Lloyd, Brittany Griner. All those, all those players in the league that are ballers that actually put the game of women's basketball on their back, we disrespecting them by saying the only reason why y'all getting these chartered flights or people is watching their game is because of Caitlin Clark. That's a lie. And then it's disrespectful to Caitlin Clark for y'all to be saying these women in this professional sport, the same professional sport that she plays, should take it easy on her. Like, you're – like, do you not believe in Caitlin Clark's game? Because if she's so good, like y'all say she is, then her game will speak for herself. Nobody has to take it easy on her. Like, so this this whole narrative about, oh, she bringing in the money, y'all need to be appreciative. Y'all can shut that shit up. Like, that don't, like, I don't need to kiss your ass because now 
I got a chartered flight. No, I still get paid to play basketball. I still get paid to, you know, the game is still about wins and losses. I still get paid to win. I don't get paid to let Caitlin Clark put up 45 points so the fans could be happy. That's not what I get paid to do. So, like, for pro basketball players to be coming out and saying, or former pro basketball players to be coming out and saying, like, yo, y'all got to take it easy. Y'all got to, you know I mean, you know, stop being petty and stop hating because she's bringing in money. Y'all sound stupid. Y'all, y'all really sound stupid because y'all wouldn't do this for no male athlete at all. You wouldn't do this at all. And if Caitlin Clark was black, you wouldn't be saying this at all either. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I think Caitlin Clark going to be one of the most explosive NBA WNBA players ever. Overall, like I said, overall, she won't be the best, but I think she probably one of the most. And by the way, I will give her a lot of credit. She is going to be a reason a lot of people watch. She, she's Steph Curry. Um, she like yeah. she she the explosive player. They can't like with WNBA player can't dunk and stuff, and they can't jump as high when you do something. So guess what? Shooting for half court gonna be the funnest you get. The Steph Curry fit. So she's gonna change the game. She's gonna make stuff. Paige Butler is too. Um, Juju, the girl that's coming into Louisville next year. I think they all gonna change the game for the better. I think they mm-hmm. have a lot. I think they have a lot more like personality to them, especially the um, Paige. Paige already. Yeah. She Paige. Like, she. Yeah. A lot of personality to Juju. Who else? Flaw J from uh LSU. She gonna be in the league soon. Like, I mean, and then like I just like you said earlier, Angel Reese is also one of the other, you know, one of the other players that's given this league some more views. The whole like the whole draft class as a whole, like you got Kaitlyn Clark, Angel Reese, uh, Cameron Brink, Rakia Jackson, Camilla Cardosa. Like, there are so many players within this draft that's going to make this league better. It's not just Caitlin Clark. Like, y'all got to, you know what I mean? Just, just by the way, y'all putting up. By the way, I don't know if y'all know, y'all putting unfair pressure on us. Yeah, y'all are. <laughs> like, unnecessary, unfair pressure on her. Like, y'all mm-hmm. like, yo, yo, hoop on this. By the way, I want y'all I want y'all to know something. Larry Berry, let's do something that people can know. Larry Berry, his, his second year in the league, Dr. J punched him in the face. <laughs> But Larry Bird did tell him, "I'm going right there. I'm scoring on you." Then he did it, and was disrespectful. <laughs> he got punched. In. He got punched. Though. Like he wasn't taking it easy on him. He, Larry Bird was just that. He was just that dude. <laughs> Larry Bird, that dude. I know a lot of people like, "Oh, he couldn't jump." Larry Bird was less out than everybody with a bad back, and he was still dropping thirty. Larry Bird yeah, was yeah. the best basketball player ever. He couldn't jump. He couldn't run fast. He couldn't do nothing. But one thing he was fundamental. Him and Tim Duncan was one of mm-hmm. them two players. I don't think get enough love because they game wasn't. Yeah. Larry Bird, Larry Bird, his trash talk made this game more fun, but he still yeah. was a boring game. Tim Duncan didn't trash talk and nothing, so he was just boring. Tim Duncan probably should be in your top four basketball players ever, but nobody gonna ever right. give him credit because he just shot the ball off the backboard. He won the few people. I think I think he's like the only player with a quadruple double in the finals. Mm. <laughs> and he won like how many? He won how many rings? I'm just saying the man. Yeah, he got five rings. Yeah, <laughs> on a five team rings, thing. multiple MVPs in a rings. city in a city that. I, I'm I'm here now. I'm living in San Antonio. It's a gigantic market, but it's not. It doesn't feel like a gigantic market, right? Like I'm just saying, it's like everybody like Atlanta. We are, this, this city is five times bigger than Atlanta. Atlanta got like two hundred fifty thousand. This city got like one point three million. It just didn't feel like it. <laughs> but but yeah, but he was in this city, and it's not like Dallas. Dallas got way less people in this field. But let's listen to Caitlin Clark and how she feel about it. Kind of piggyback on that. There's been a lot of narratives around the attention that you you're getting versus some of the vets that have been in this league for a long time do you think about that or do you concentrate on blocking that out and playing your game to be honest i'm not really on social media i don't read that like this is my job my job is to compete and play basketball every single day um you know i think the more attention we can get on every team around this league that's only going to help it get better and better um but yeah like i said like my job is just to continue to show up and you know, help this team to get better. You know, obviously we're fighting for our first win and that's my main focus. And that's where, you know, 110%, that's what I think about every single day is come in and get better and focus on the things that I need to focus on. Kind of piggyback on that. And that's why I rock with, and that's why I rock with her too, because she understands it too. She's, I think she get a sense of what everybody trying right. to do. Like, like, I don't even think she want that. I don't even think she, because she competitive. So I know she don't want that, like, yeah. oh, just let her win stuff. She she not that kind of person. That's why I, that's why we like her in the first place. Which also right. which also gets me to the the criticism of everybody like from Gil and Stephen A. Oh, he can't man didn't shouldn't have ever called out Kyrie. Kyrie said it best. That's why we love that motherfucker. Right. 
That's why we love him. What you mean when he shouldn't have said it? What happened to NBA players, dog? Terry Bird was a rookie telling Dr. J off and to drop your ass off. Ain't nobody say he shouldn't have said that. Nope. <laughs> even He's if Kyrie did, him, bro. Yeah, even oh. if Ky- even if Kyrie did get how many points and dropped him off, and, and gonna want to come back next game because and next game, guess what we gonna want to see? He was like, "Oh, Kyrie was averaging one point a game, and then he woke up. That game was fun as hell to watch. <laughs> if Kyrie dropped one, they get beat by twenty. <laughs> hell yeah, Kyrie carried that first half. So what you want? You want a twenty point Minnesota lead in the first half, or you want Kyrie getting buckets? And and all uh, and a and a questionable call. The only reason the game is uh, was even was cat was it over the cylinder? Was it not? Was the only reason? It was an exciting ass game. <laughs> Ain't that what we want? I always hated that. Like when the other best player on the other team was hurt, I'm like, I don't want him hurt because then right. no excuse to go out with me. Oh, if we had him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Knicks, looking at you, New York Knicks. But I'm not. I'm not mad at Ant Man for saying that. Like. You know what I mean? He said, like, listen, what what you expect him to say? Like, we, we've we been praising Ant all year long for his mentality. You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden, you're talking about some. oh, he, he can't he can't say that. He can't poke the bear. You know what I mean? Just imagine telling Kobe that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, imagine telling Kobe he can't poke a bear. Adam Johnson mean? dropped Kobe off of 40, and he still came back in this game. That's what Kobe right. <laughs> Ant, Ant not worried about that. The reason why Ant not worried about poking a bear because he's a fucking bear himself. I mean, that's why he's not he's not afraid. You've seen it. He literally just took out Nikola Jokic, the play, the people, the player that everybody says is the best player in the league. People saying he better than Hakeem Olajuwon all time, saying he better than Shaq. Yeah, you know I mean, and Anthony Edwards just took him out. So, you know what I mean. Come on, like I get it. Kyrie is that bull. You know, he he, he has a championship. We know the type of work that Kyrie can put in. We know that. But let's not act like Anthony Edwards didn't just, you know, send the 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 current NBA champions pack. Like he he did just do that. I mean, so and Kevin Durant. He could he could talk. And yeah, and he sent Kevin Durant <laughs> home before that. Why like, telling him to, why telling him I got you? But y'all loved mm-hmm. it then. Y'all loved it then. Now it's a problem. Like, come on. And, and, but y'all loved it when y'all wasn't paying attention to him. And then y'all start paying attention to him when he do it. Because I promise you, Ant wasn't in that conversation before he started talking to Durant. How many times, what was it, Luca, SGA? Shout out to SGA for getting this conversation. I love SGA game. But it went, but then he started talking to Durant. Everybody like, is he talking to Durant like that? That's on your ass, boy. <laughs> Everybody like, is he talking to Durant like that? And then and then look what happened. He put him out. Yeah. I mean, now listen, I you got the, Mavericks. the face of the league after that. Y'all call him the face of the league. <laughs> I got the Mavericks winning this series because you know I am a Mavericks fan, so I'm a ride with my team. But if it put the, you know what I mean, if they win and they go to the finals, then I mean, shut up. He can say he can poke whatever bear he want to at. He, I just he feel he like lost. I want to poke. He 22. Right. <laughs> Luca and, messed up four five years. He done made mistakes four or five years. We talking about the mistakes he made at the end of the game. He twenty two, <laughs> right? Just let Ant be Ant. And this then then we praise Ant. And wasn't we in love with the the uh, what, what's that movie? Uh, Uncut Gems when he was talking shit to the ball. Like y'all love that. Y'all was like, yo, that's you know what I mean. That's who Ant really is on the court. Y'all love that. So now now that he doing it, it's it's a problem. Like. I ain't trying to hear that shit. By the way, I get what y'all trying to say because you don't want to wake up that peak that is Kyrie. Yeah. Fuck all that. <laughs> this is the fun, dog. Clap your hands and get in his face and drink. But when you a dog, when you a dog yourself, you're not worried about that shit. Like, oh, oh, I don't want to wake the beast up in Kyrie. I mean, so are we saying Anthony Edwards don't have one? Are we saying he can't get woke woken up, waking up and, and just start going crazy? Cause he can't. Oh, interested in the game? He's like, yeah, I got Kyrie. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, my first instinct when he said that is, I gotta watch this game. Kyrie ain't gonna like that. I gotta watch it though. <laughs> my first instinct, I gotta watch it. Like, Kyrie was after one point in the first quarter. <laughs> I, said, I know he ain't gonna do that now. Cause Kyrie a dog. He got that competitive nature now. Like, no, nah, Kyrie for the rest of the series, he gonna he gonna <laughs> play like he be playing in game one. He no, gonna keep. He gonna be aggressive. And guess what? That make me want to do. Watch. 
I was like, it's gonna, I'm, it's gonna be an entertaining series, bro. It's gonna be the best series in the conference finals. I mean, the problem I got in the NFL is they don't. They, everybody's scared to challenge Pat Mahomes. <laughs> Joe Burrow, the only person that wasn't scared of him, and he's the only one that beat him. And the only other person that beat him in the playoffs, two people that ever beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Joe Burrow and the Tom goat. Brady. <laughs> you know what I mean? The GOAT That's ain't it. scared of nobody. The <laughs> GOAT ain't, you know, Brady ain't scared of shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Joe Burrow is, that man smokes cigars at LSU with a jacket on. He ain't scared. He don't care. Yeah, Joe Shiesty. He survived. He survived the offensive line. He don't give a fuck about that now. <laughs> <laughs> survived the offensive line, niggas. I can't. I'm more scared of my offensive line than I am you, dog. I ain't scared. Of shit. <laughs> so, so like, look, and, bro. I'm sitting here watching Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson celebrate beating Patrick Mahomes in regular season games. I'm like, y'all ain't got a chance. Y'all better talk crazy. crazy. They're like, oh yeah, I respect Patrick Mahomes, blah, but no, I'm coming for him. Right. That what Joe Barrow was like. He beat. He don't want to beat him. I'm just saying, he don't want it. <laughs> Joe Burrow said, I'm trying to beat that nigga. I ain't trying to be his friend. Fuck that shit. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. You respect him, because I'm that fear in you, dog. I gotta, I gotta outscore him. No, I gotta play my game. And that's what I gotta do. He gotta play his game. He looked, he did look winning in that fourth quarter. And cat yeah. cat gotta cat gotta dominate. He can't do he can't do what he did that game. He he yeah. the one person on that team got a match. Like it's three superstars in this series. Unfortunately, cat ain't one of them, but cat is right. close. And Kat got Kat is, he, he's a he's a star. You know what I mean? He ain't reached the super. But he, he could have been. He got, but he got probably got the most obvious of the superstar matchups. Right. Because Luca is getting held by McDaniel. Uh, McDaniel's is a dog on defense, so he going he got he got to earn it. <laughs> and Kyrie and Ant going at each other, and Dante and Dante Jones them holding Ant too. So it's a good thing. You got. I'm sorry. You got Gafford on. I love Gafford now. There ain't no way in here. Yeah, Gafford. <laughs> that's my guy. But I love Gafford. His defense is good, but. Your talent level. Cat, you should be cooking Gafford. <laughs> I love Gafford. Gafford is a game changer for the map. He the reason they got a finals chance. Him and um oh boy. They oh yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, PJ and uh Lively. Yeah, yeah so he them that they, they gave him a chance. But you the thing you dominate this series, and that's that's y'all best chance to win. If you if you can't dominate the series, it's on you cat to me. Yeah, because I think Ant's, I think Ant gonna do what Ant do. Yeah, Ant, you know Ant gonna put his put up his numbers, but if Minnesota gonna win this series. You can't win this series with Jay and McDaniels being your second best player. That's not going. It's not going. You're not going to beat the Mavericks with that. Like Cat got to, you know what I mean? Like now, when Ant hit 25, could he do it? Maybe, but Ant still 22. Like, <laughs> like I'm just about, remember all your other favorite players at 22. I'm just saying, LeBron didn't win his first championship 28. He 22 in this position. I just right. want people to put that in perspective because he's gonna make mistakes at the end of the game. <laughs> right. Luca did it three years ago against um who was that they playing? He did it three years ago when he was throwing the ball out of bounds and did that stupid foul. But young player is gonna be young player. And it's one. And like I said, I did want. I want to cover that because it was insane that people like he shouldn't have do that. He shouldn't. Have. I'm like, bro, that makes the game fun. No, I, I, I do get why they did it. It's fun to talk about. It gives you a clip when you Stephen A. looking shook. That boy trolls the problem. But well, let's be realistic. <laughs> let's be realistic. That made you want to watch the game because you ain't heard that in the NBA in so long. I ain't seen a veteran. I ain't seen an NBA player call out Kyrie in my life. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever. I don't think I can recall a nigga ever calling Kyrie out. Like that was Kobe in them era when they're like, "I got him." Whole game, full court press. Guess who the only team that full court press niggas? Minnesota and, and um Oakland Homer City. Them the only two teams mm-hmm. press niggas full court. Cat, like I got him all the way full court. I'm like, that's that that's that's the basketball I love right there. All this other soft, this this other I don't know what's going on. But but I do I do agree in a way, but at the same time, y'all were kind of ruining basketball. <laughs> yeah, like because being all this friendly, oh I'm scared because he's so good. That crap ruined football too. That's why Patrick Mahomes dumb in y'all. Oh, I gotta show respect. No, I want to beat you. I look. I'm like Kendrick. <laughs> I love you, but if y'all not my real friends, I'm YMW man. <laughs> right. I mean, if competition oh, still is, competition still gotta exist at the end of the day. Yeah, the like, whole Kane and Clark like, thing. That's why I bring it together. K and Clark and y'all like, oh, you can't say nothing. You can't say she's gonna struggle. Y'all supposed to let us go? No. I don't believe she wants y'all to let us go. She want to just be a dog and leave herself like I think she will be. And if y'all if y'all just let her do score and doing something, she won't be that dog in real life. 
And then y'all gonna complain about them letting us go and how the game is trash because everybody can score so easy and then all them stupid nerds y'all like to do. But we're keeping them honest. So I do got one more honest media discussion. Shout out to the media. Draymond Green. Let's listen. Mm. Stephen A. Smith really pissed me off. And the reason he pissed me off was because he hit me. He's like, yo, it's been hard for a lot of us to talk about you these last few few days. You know, for me, I'm like, okay. It's been hard for me to watch. But I'm watching it because I want to see everything that everybody has to say. But the thing that pissed me off is, you tell me it's been hard for y'all to talk about me. Stephen A., anytime I meet someone and they say something about you, it's never like, yo, I like him. He cool. It's always like, man, f*** that dude. He a character. He's this. He's that. And I always say back, I actually know the guy. The guy is actually a cool dude. You can take what you want from the TV screen. I actually know the guy. He's a cool dude and a real dude. And then you get the opportunity to talk about me. And listen, I know you got a job to do. I know you got to do your thing and say what you got to say. But at not one point did you say, well, y'all are saying this person is up and this person need help now i know the person say what you want about the basketball player that's fine but i know the person but to sit back and see those that claim to know and appreciate me as a human being just flow with the narrative because it was easy to do i lost a lot of respect for a lot of people shout out to the big pie with shaquille on there i do want to bring this up he said something and that was a lie when people like oh he need help and all this and kevin durant said it Stephen A. did take up for him. He did. Stephen A. literally said, I don't like that narrative. I don't want y'all saying that. That brother's a good brother. That's his, that was his words well when Kevin Durant said. Kevin Durant knows he's a good brother, as Stephen A. would say. So this whole narrative I don't like. So you saying he never said that for you is not true. Now, I, I do get how this internet is. You have a cut. In your big video, you get 100 comments. I'm pretty sure Hollywood had some when you get a lot of comments. And mm-hmm. you have a hundred people that like you, and then you have that one dude, and you focus on it. But then, what I do to him? <laughs> I don't really like, man. You killing this video, man. You did that, dog. I like this video. Then the one dude like, you an idiot. And you're like, damn. What I do to you? Right. Like, damn, damn, bro. <laughs> so I'm getting. You probably saw that. You probably saw that. Um, you probably saw a clip where he didn't defend you all the time. But the man can't defend you every time somebody bring you up when you choking niggas out. Right. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I mean, it's some it's certain shit you can't defend sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, why did you choke Rudy Gobert out, though? What, what the fuck? Why like, come you? on. Come on, Draymond. Like, I get it, Draymond. And I, I fucks with Draymond. I watch his podcast. I you know what I mean? Know. Usually when he speak, he, he do be speaking facts. In this instance, I'm not mad at what he said. But at the same time, it's just like. Like you didn't catch it all and you missed yeah. point. And you just you know thought I mean? of one thing that made you upset. Right. You took it out of context because if you talk to Stephen A, if you know him like that, as you say you did, then you know for a fact that he been riding for you. I mean, you could just be honest and say, hey, this one instance where I thought you was going to have my back, you yeah. didn't. So yeah, that's that's kind of, it, it turned me off. If it, You know, that fucked me up. You could say that, but to say, I mean, to spin it the way he spin it, like, boy, never supported you, you know what I mean? Or he, you know what I mean? But I get it, though, because it's like in this instance where you had a chance to stand up for me, you you let that narrative, you know what I mean, slide. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. But at the same How time. How many times do I have to keep defending you? At right. <laughs> like, hey, bro, damn, you done choked another nigga? <laughs> I'm just being real. And by the way, I, was, I this is how I know Dre, he would Dre, he would defend Draymond. Because I'm up here mad. To like, what the fuck with this when Kyrie was going through it? I was right. upset about that. I'm like, this and then Jay Williams shot for Jay Williams for calling him out. It sounds personal, Stephen A. It ain't never personal. Two years later, oh, it was personal. My bad. <laughs> I talked to that man. It wasn't even personal with Kyrie. It was personal with his dad. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you and his dad got in the bridge of fight. Now you get all personal and talk about him. Because that's what my thought was. I was like, this man defending this man. He ain't defending Kyrie like this. <laughs> what the f- going on? Why are you it's crazy, ain't crazy? it? This nigga choking a nigga on thing. You defended him. <laughs> but you wouldn't defend Kyrie because he wanted to post Sage in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, well, you, you ain't gonna defend Kyrie because he wanna put put state poor Sage in the stadium. Like, that is what. So I that's how I do know he defended him a lot, by the way. And he even called you before he even said it on the show. It's been he's like it's been hard to it's been hard talking about you lately. That means he hit you up. 
Meaning, as he said today on his show, which I don't even like defending Stephen A. Smith like this. <laughs> he get on my nerves a lot of time. But he hit you a minute he hit you up before. You didn't say, hey, I ain't like what you said, blah, blah, blah. He he messaged you before. What you respect? You know what I mean? He ain't got a message. <laughs> you know what I mean? He ain't got a message. I'm just gonna talk about you. You know it's a part of the show. You knew I was gonna talk about you today. You choked the man out yesterday. Right. You know? But I hit you up and be like, man, it's hard to talk about you. He's like, okay. You didn't say, hey, bro, I didn't appreciate that. If he was, if you thought he was a solid dude, I'd be like, hey, bro. Like, let's say, let's say something happened. How the hell, like, yo, I can't defend that nigga Zell for this. And I'm like, how the hell? I'm going to hit him up. I'm like, yo, bro, really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't going to be like, man, I ain't going to go on the podcast and fold my letter like, fuck that nigga. How the hell? I lost respect yeah. for that nigga. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Especially if he hit me up before, which gave me the opportunity right. to say. <laughs> like, come on, bro. I was like, hey, bro, you tripping. I had to talk about it today. And I'm like, all right, bet. And that's all I'm going to say? I ain't, ain't going to say nothing else to you? That, that was weird to me. So that's that's uh, anything else in the media you saw that was weird? How the hell before we go? I do want to open the floor for you. Last week. Uh, Anything in the media that I saw that's been weird. The only thing that's that – well, the weirdest thing that I saw in the media this week was that Apple Music uh, 100 albums list. That was, you know what I mean, that, that thing kind of, you know, threw me for a loop. But, you know, it's just been, for me, it's just been a lot of Caitlin Clark talk, you know what I mean, and a lot of Twitter talk about, you know what I mean, now the debate is uh, Take Care is a, is a better album than Good Kid, Mad City. So, you know what I mean, I don't know. Who started this narrative, or you know what I mean? But I just want to tell y'all now, it's not. And I love Take Care, but it's not better than Good Kid, Mad City. It's not. You just gotta keep it a buck. And those aren't even Kendrick and Drake's best albums. So like, you know what I mean? Come on. They gonna always show up to Good Kid, Mad City. Shout out to Good Kid, Mad City. You know I, mean? I, I, th- I love I th- Good Kid, Mad City. I think that I I do think sometimes we. Even I think when we say that sometimes we like I got like I say it's the best album because I got a personal attachment to that. <laughs> so so I'm always putting it, it's gonna be in my top five all time forever because I got a personal right. attachment to that. So I will openly say that I'm biased. <laughs> 2012 was my college graduation year and that's all I played. That was my time. I remember graduating with that son with them sons out there <laughs> from poetic justice to backseat freestyle and all and all that's money mm-hmm. tree. That's my that's my graduation year. <laughs> so I got I got a bias when it comes to good kid Mad City. Even if I did sonically like damn better, <laughs> but but who cares? It ain't gonna take money trees away from me. No, I love I love that album. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, That's according cool. to Apple Music, you know it's the it was the seventh seventh greatest album of all time. So you know. that list was so weird. I don't know how Kanye only got one on the. Yeah, Kanye only got one album. J, uh, you know, Kendrick only has one album on the list. That's crazy. Forest Hills Drive is not even on the list. You know what I mean? Which is crazy. You know what I mean? It, it, what? Uh, they had Get Rich or Die Trying at like 82. You know, I'm just, I don't know. But I will be doing my own top 100 albums of all time list. You know I mean, I will be premiering it on the Welcome to Hollywood podcast. So, you know I mean? oh, it's going to it's going to take a minute. You know what I mean, for me to get the list together. So, I, you know, episode probably not going to be out for like a, a month or some change, but it's coming. Where can they find it at Hollywood? You can find that on the Hollywood underscore Sensei Two and Five YouTube channel, and also the. What it sound like podcast YouTube channel and the Blurred Cartel YouTube channel. Yeah, so shout out to go check my boy out. They had a great discussion. Miles is hilarious. She be she hate who she hate. Yeah, yeah. That be Mallory is <laughs> Mallory is a treasure. We got we got to protect her at all costs. Even if I disagree, I just let her hate. I need that. That's the, we need that hate in our life. The same thing with Gills Arena. Everybody on that show hate on everybody. It's the most ridiculous. That man said Donovan Mitchell, Brandon Jen, like he ain't uh, he should be tall. Yeah. I like I ain't never seen no hate like that. Sam Malik <laughs> Monk better than Donovan Mitchell. Like I'm convinced Donovan Mitchell must have smashed this girl or something. 
<laughs> Yo, you see, you see how they bring him up and then he just sat in that chair? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My man said, he said, I don't know. I don't like the game. I think it feel like he should be taller. I said, what the fuck? I hated this. Yeah, he, he was just saying anything. And I fuck with Brandon Jennings. It's usually McCants that be getting on my nerves. But and McCants says that, and you know he so, you know McCants is that way. He felt that hate from him. He like, he just looked at that nigga like this, with the hat on, that big ass hat, he just looked at him. Like, that nigga got to hate him, I feel it. <laughs> that nigga got the hate, hate is strong with this one. He just had to look at him, boy. He said, why you don't like Devin Mitchell? I don't know, I feel like he should be taller. That's when I knew you was hating <laughs> when you didn't have a reason, right? <laughs> he said he felt, it felt like he no reason why you don't like his game because he should be taller. Like, yeah, that's that's not taller than you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like both six three. <laughs> I mean, now are there 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 are some valid criticisms to Donovan Mitchell's game, but to say he should be taller is the reason why he, you know, what I mean, is that's just dumb. Like. Like, does his style of play, in my opinion, is it conducive to winning basketball? No. You know what I mean? I don't think so. I don't think he could be the number one option on a championship team. But to say Malik Monk is better than Donovan Mitchell is just asinine. Like, that's you know I mean? that's crazy. <laughs> and I fuck with, with Malik Monk. Malik Monk, not a bad player, but he's not Donovan Mitchell level. Of, Yo, my like, man looked down a roster and was just mentioning everybody that's still starting. Put <laughs> just start saying he was better. Than, like, who's right. in the draft? <laughs> man said, who's in the draft? Brandon <laughs> Jennings, he gonna say Lou Dort better than uh, Donovan Mitchell next? Because Donovan Mitchell should be taller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the? <laughs> Shout out to McKenzie and though. I, I I vehemently disagree. That's the I ain't gonna lie. Lexi Brown's on the show too. I, I love Lexi too with the Sparks. She an amazing player. She dropped twenty and eight the other day. Amazing mm-hmm. game. But they hate being fessing her too. Everybody on that show be hating. Bro, I don't even know what Gil be hating on. He just be finding a way to hate. One week he like foreign players can't play, and then the next week he like look all the big players for him. I'm like, didn't you just say last yeah. week? Gil be trolling his ass up. <laughs> he, he got Shaq and Shannon Sharp in the beef. <laughs> just, cause, just cause he would tell Shaq was jealous and then he like but Shaq an assassin and nobody gonna mess with Shaq and Shannon just gonna agree with the part that he like yeah Shaq jealous and joking so now Shaq man he said he would cause, cause Gil didn't put the better in his back and run away Shaq said oh I'm jealous All right, I got you watch watch this I'm gonna go hop in the booth real quick you know I, mean? I, I do wanna kinda bring I do wanna bring up this too before we go off cause this is something important Let's see what Dreaming wealth is. coming from the fines to me don't make sense. You know, when you talk about as hard as we work to accumulate wealth coming from situations that most people never make it out. And then you get fined the way we get fined. It's actually not set up for us to be wealthy after we're done playing. This job is not set up the way we're taxed. Oh, California. Like, the, like oh. the way we're taxed, the way we're fined. And, you know, you hear about all these programs like this program, this, this program. That shit is to cover everybody. This program is to teach this guy this. But if I do something wrong, I lose $100,000. Man, it took my mom four years when I was growing up to make $100,000. And I lose that in the night because, what? The referee got mad at me, and he didn't like what I said to him. So I lose $5,000 like that, like on a test. All right, Draymond, let's, let's be honest, dog. Dog, you made like $200, $300 million in your life. That's like a penny to what I make average on my job, dog. Yeah. Just being real, though. I, I'm sorry. It, when rich niggas complain, it be so weird. Because most of these dudes never lived. Let's be honest. I'm a, let's, let me just say it. Let's just rip the band off and tell the truth. Most of you athletes have never paid bills without being rich. They're still talking. That's active. Not the ones that went broke. We Y'all understand that. Bro, y'all got out of college and started making millions. Right, <laughs> y'all got the first thing y'all did. You let Draymond, you left Michigan State and got like a three million dollar year contract. And you talking about it took your mom four years to make a hundred thousand dollars total, sir. You made that. You made ten you times made that within months, weeks, <laughs> probably a game. <laughs> if you if you bet your three point two, Rick, I'm telling you, athlete, because. And it's fair because the reason I'm giving y'all that background, Holly, because they never had to go live check paycheck to paycheck because 
they came in out of college being wealthy. Right. You don't make the league and not be wealthy unless you're a seven-round NFL pick, and they still make quite a bit more because I do have a cousin that's like seven-round, and, and they just sat there. Yo, the ball boys, if you be a ball boy for the, um, for the Dallas Cowboys right now, you'll make $90,000. Shit, I'm about to move to Texas and, and apply to, to be a ball boy for the Cowboys. That's what I'm saying. I looked it up. It's, it's there. You go to the Raiders. Yeah, I saw some football, football, football uh, Dak, Pros- Dak Prescott for 90 yeah. years. Good. Yeah, $90,000. Listen, your ball boys make $90,000 80, to $90,000. Let's go look it up. I don't want to – because people might call me a lie. Let's see. <laughs> the ball boys. I want to say, while he looking that up, like I get what Draymond is saying, but know. at the same time, don't nobody want to hear no rich nigga complain about losing money when niggas is struggling to, you know what I mean, as the lady said in the tweet, pay for groceries. Like, I don't want to hear about how you got to spend $5,000 when I can't even get $5,000. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to hear that, bro. Like, I, I need 5Gs right now. Like, you know I mean? <laughs> Shit, I, I need 5Gs right now. Like, so, like, no, nah, we ain't trying to hear that. Like. You know, you knew you knew what you signed up for when you came in the NBA. You get fined for certain shit. So, like, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to hear it. Bro, all you got to do is not get fined. Think about this. Right. <laughs> just, just, you know what I mean? Keep your – don't say nothing to the refs. Keep your hand to yourself. And you, you, you'll you save so much more money. Like, hey, bro, like, I get fined because I get fined $100,000. Yeah, because you punched – you choked out Gobert. I got fined for five thousand dollars for saying the word. Okay, now you done went from a hundred thousand dollars to five thousand. <laughs> we done dropped a long way, dog. That's twenty years worth of difference if you was to do that. So let's see if I can actually find it. Let's see NFL ball boy salaries. <laughs> okay, it's a lot less than it. It was probably the NBA towel boy, but it was, let's go over. Cause I, I didn't want to lie to y'all if I left. I didn't want y'all looking it up and lying. By the way, NFL, the National Football League ball boy makes an estimated forty thousand dollars, three hundred seventy six, forty thousand three hundred seventy six dollars, which is three thousand dollars a month, seven hundred seventy six a week. Which is not true, by the way, because you got to understand that's how much they make annually, right? Mm-hmm. They don't play half the season, right? I want people to understand that. So when I got that forty thousand, they only played through when. August through February. February, and that's if you make the playoff. So the that mm-hmm. average got to go up. So let's be real. Let's see what he say. I'm gonna do thirty five thousand a year, depending on what team you say. Starting well, some even reported to be starting well above fifty thousand. Which I I see it say the Dallas Cowboys. This is just an estimate, but I read somewhere the Dallas Cowboys probably nine five thousand. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but the the league average is forty thousand. Like I said. They don't do it during the offseason pretty much, and they probably only do it in their spare time sometimes. So they can get another job, too, on top of that. And plus, it's not even that long if you've ever been to an NFL practice or something. They don't, it ain't like you're doing that eight hours a day. It's just, right. <laughs> it's, it's eight, eight hours a day. So, so that I'm just comparing it to while uh, you talking about your <laughs> your big, huge contract. Um, the ball boy for the NBA makes seventeen to thirty-two dollars an hour, and on average twenty-three dollars an hour, which is more than most people. I'm just saying. I just want, I just want to put in context of what we talk about. That's why we got to keep the media in check, Hollywood. That's what this yes, channel. Yes, sir. Is. But one more time, Hollywood, tell them where they can find you. We can. Yeah, I mean, you can find your boy Hollywood Sensei, part of the new media. Yeah, you know I mean, Hollywood Sensei, Hollywood underscore Sensei two one five on YouTube, Hollywood Sensei on. Instagram, Hollywood underscore Sensei215 on TikTok. And also, you can find me everywhere the Blurred Cartel is, which is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Twitch. I mean, also, the What It Sound Like podcast every Thursday and the Welcome to Hollywood podcast. Looking forward to them. They'd be great shows. Like I said, shout out to Brazil, Mal, Mal, all them. Um, you can find me. Like I said, oh, keeping that in mind on the YouTube channel, keeping that in mind on the Spotify, which is this. And sooner or later, this is gonna go up once we, once I figure out the routine. I won't. I think this was an amazing episode with Hollywood. I seen we've been at twenty forever, so y'all been liking it too. <laughs> so, so we'll see where that go. But it's and it's fine because I don't think nobody ever like critiques the media outside of like being mad at something they said about somebody else. 
Like, yo, yep. what you doing? What you doing? How, sh- how should the media react to this? How should the ownership, how should the company look at it? So I want to give a little different perspective on that. So these shows will be mostly on Fridays. If you're on YouTube, it'll probably be out Friday or Saturday. I ain't decided yet. Overall, 99 Media is Zell May. If you're on Kick or Twitch, 99 Unscore Zell May. If you're on Twitter, just so you can find everything else and look for whatever we're talking about. I do appreciate Hollywood for joining me today in the first episode, The Pilot. Yes, YouTube sure. exclusive, not on Spotify yet. So all the Spotify people go over to the keep an eye because we got casual conversation over there, and people like them. If you want more, it's not that. I don't know. I say this a casual conversation. That is a wild show. But, but I do appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for the YouTube people, and you know what they got. It. You know what they say when they see the show. These niggas. <laughs>